want to bring up today? Yes. Okay. For those of you who um, do not send your offering electronically, there are boxes of envelopes downstairs on the little table in the south room. <coughs> the names are on them, so just pick them up and go down there. And I have a few announcements for myself that I want to uh, spend a little bit of time on. One is that a number of the people who are in our congregation today had an opportunity to attend the men of the note concert yesterday. And I just asked each of them this morning what they thought of it. I think it's, it's unanimous that we should probably be the best service or concert that we have seen. And uh, I'm just going to explain why. The Mennonite concert is really, there are three churches that uh, come together and uh, make a part of the, the singing group. Um, Mr. Alvetter is here with us. Uh, he uh, is in the group. Uh, most of you know Gary Fitzpatrick, who uh, is very active in the group well as well. And uh, you all remember, of course, our dearly loved Jim Crichton, who spent many, many years in that group and other groups as well. So our church and myself, and we have been well represented. Stokely United Church, where the practices take place, um, they have a, a, a large group that are part of that, as well as the uh, Christ Church, uh, the United Anglican Church in Stokely. They had a group as well, and of course there are members from all over the city who partake in that. So this particular concert, there's 26 people there, but they joined with a special guest, the New Song Chancel Choir from Port Perry. And this was a phenomenal group of 16 individuals, much younger than us. <laughs> Their voices were very, very powerful as each of uh, Brian and Marion were there, and they, they, they will tell you as well um, how fantastic they were. And you all remember that we had Su Susan Ryman here, who sang with us a few weeks, and you know what a wonderful voice she has. Well, her daughter joined her in a duet. Her daughter is 11, and her daughter's almost 12. <laughs> she did, they did a beautiful, beautiful duet, as well as the leader of the New Song Chancel Choir is Jonathan uh, Liebich. And he is a wonderfully trained baritone singer with a voice that just, just resonates, absolutely. And his daughter was a soloist, and she's 14. And his son, son who is just an adult, is a part of the choir as well, and also has a strong voice similar to his father. And they had a cellist and balmer there and it was just such a beautiful, beautiful concert. Now the reason I'm taking so much time to mention this is because the selection of carols and the feeling that was in that room was just unbelievable. Um, the men and notes sang a lot of, of their uh, carols and as well as the, um, the song choir. But in the second half, Susan and Jonathan did a duet. And this duet was, first of all, he sang the Mary Do You Know, which many of you are familiar with that one, but she did the Breath of Heaven, which was, the words were by Amy Grant and Mark Lowry, and it really was telling the story of Mary just before the baby was born, and how she was feeling it on the trip. How she was talking to God. It was just overpowering. It was just a beautiful, beautiful thing as well. Uh, I've asked each of the people what they felt was an that they liked in the concert as well. So talk to them, ask them what, what they thought. But it was just a beautiful, beautiful concert. And it's a shame that they did not video tape <laughs> Yes, record it. So, so, anyway, so that's one thing I just want to mention because. The real spirit of Christmas was able to come through in that, and uh, we, we all have a, a wonderful, wonderful time. So, secondly, I want to mention that uh, I have uh, met with the uh, 
the Salvation Night Church in Markham. This really has to do with more with outreach and, and our representation of helping the homeless. And this coming week, I'll be meet, meeting with Major Mike and to discuss with them how that they can help us and the other churches in the Markham area and do something all together to help the homeless. So that is something that we will be discussing over the next few weeks, and I look forward to that as well. And the these, this season in Advent, of course, we're getting ready for new beginnings. I mean, that's what the theme is it's, that we've been hearing about. And so I just want to put out to each of you that this is a this is a time for us to look at new ideas for the future. Where are we going in 2024? As a church, as a congregation, as part of the community, how can we create a home here that people will come in? And what is it that they are looking for? So uh, we will be asking you if uh, how what your for your ideas and also for how you can assist in that moment. <coughs> Those are just a few things that I wanted to mention today. Thank you. Now, I believe that we are going to have a special little portion where we're going to express our gratitude to those people who have worked so hard in this coming year. So I'll pass it over to Carol. There are a number of people here within Heritage United that do such a wonderful job at volunteering. Uh, we have folks in the kitchen, folks that help out with committees, and of course, each week we have uh, the blessing of having such wonderful musical talent here, both uh, on keyboards and piano and French horn, guitar and musical talent. And we would like to kind of just thank a few people uh, there are some poinsettias for each of you to take home and a wonderful card as well. So Beth, uh, yours is the first one. There are some extras on the tree if anybody would like a candy cane. If you feel like you need one during the service, just walk up and grab one. Okay, are there any more names to add to the prayer list this morning? Often in the most unexpected places. And in this time of stress and expectations, we may be surprised. As the true wonder of this season is revealed to us. The love of the Lord is around us. 
Christ is at home in your heart. I invite you to close your eyes and place your hand over your heart and take a deep breath and rest in the light of love. Darkness cradles the light. Starlight twinkles in the beauty of the darkness. And, and the wonder of dark and light astounds, astounds us. Light and dark, friends and companions. One cannot exist without the other. And out of the dance of night and stars burst forth love. May love dance among us, the love we know through Jesus. Worship God. 
Oh, 
I didn't have that for breakfast. <laughs> I missed mine this morning. <laughs> I oh, think goodness. maybe there's something inside. Is this a gift you got to keep on giving, <laughs> giving, giving, opening it? Maybe. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. Oh. I'm going to hold it and I'm going to let you pull it out. No, it's not. What is it? It's a mirror. It's a mirror. It's a mirror. I know that guy. Yeah. <laughs> so today... I know that guy. Maybe that. <laughs> <laughs> that side must be Two nice. Two-sided. Thank you. Thank you very much, Spencer. So, a mirror. I bet nobody had a mirror on their Christmas wish list. No. no. But in the season, the season of love, we forget that we are love. We are the love that Christ gives to us. We are the love that God shares with us. We are love to other people. So when we say, what is the best gift we're going to get or give? Is you and you and everyone here. You are the gift of love. I don't know that everyone would appreciate a mirror <laughs> as a present, but you are the gift of love. Let us share in a prayer together. Repeat after me. Dear God, dear God, dear God as Christmas comes near. As Christmas comes here, help me share, help me share my, love and kindness, my love and kindness, my gifts and talents, my gifts and talents with everyone I need. Help me say yes like Mary did. Help me say yes like Mary did. In this Advent time of giving, we ask for the gift of understanding your word. May it become in us a trust that overwhelms all doubt and fear. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I have asked Margo if she would read the Old Testament reading this morning. Israel and will plant them so that they can have a home of their own 
and no longer be disturbed. Wicked people will not oppress them anymore as they did at the beginning and have done ever since the time I appointed leaders over my people Israel. I will also give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord declares to you that the Lord himself will establish a house for you. Your house and your kingdom will endure forever before me. Your throne will be established forever.
from Luke, uh, chapter 1, verses 26 to 38, and um, read the 47 to 30, 55 verses um, during this sermon. This is the angel Gabriel visits Mary, and it reflects the song of Mary that Jennifer just sang. So I'm reading from verses 26 to 38. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to a town in Galilee named Nazareth. He had a message for a young woman promised in marriage to a man named Joseph, who was a descendant of King David. Her name was Mary. The angel came to her and said, Peace be with you. The Lord is with you and has greatly blessed you. Mary was deeply troubled by the angel's message, and she wondered what his words meant. The angel said to her, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid, Mary. God has been gracious to you, and you will become pregnant and give birth to a son. And you will name him Jesus, and he will be great, and will be called the Son of the Most High God. The Lord God will make him a king, as his ancestor David was, and he will be the king of the descendants of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary said to the angel, I'm a virgin. How can this be? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come over you, and God's power will rest upon you. For this reason, the Holy Child will be called the Son of God. Remember your relative Elizabeth? It is, it is said that she cannot have children, but she herself is now six months pregnant, even though she is very old. For there is nothing that God cannot do. I am the Lord's servant, said Mary. May it happen to me as you have said. And the angel left her. In the Old Testament, 
How about Noah? Did God choose him because he was a good swimmer? <laughs> or a sailor? Or just really good on the water? Or was he a good leader who gathered the people and the animals? And how about Abraham, who was tested by God to offer up his son Isaac as a sacrifice? Did God choose him because God knew he would be obedient? Then there's Joseph, as we call him, Joseph the with the coat of many colors. Being the youngest son, he was probably the most unlikely to become a leader. But there he was, advising the battle. There was David, and Moses, and Ruth, and Samuel, and many, many more. How did God choose these particular people? for the work that God wanted done. And that's just the Old Testament. In the New Testament, how did God choose the 12 disciples? He needed followers who would listen to his son Jesus. Now Peter, he was headstrong. And Judas, well, unreliable. And then there were fishermen, a tax collector, and more. Which brings us to Mary. The, the Bible doesn't tell us much about her background. She was a virgin, uh, lowly birth, and engaged to Joseph. It was Joseph who came from the lineage of King David. At a young age to be pregnant, and not married was shocking, to say the least. The Bible says she was perplexed. I would suggest terrified. <laughs> <laughs> At that point, the angel Gabriel appears to her to calm her down and tells her, the Lord is with you. And nothing, absolutely nothing, is impossible with God. The second reading from Luke this morning is sometimes called the Magnificent or Mary's Song. And this is what Jennifer sang for us today. It comes from Luke, <clears throat> verses 47 to 55. My soul is glad because of God my Savior, for he has remembered me, his lowly servant. From now on, all people will call me happy. Because of the great things the mighty God has done for me, his name is holy. From one generation to another, he shows mercy to those who honor him. He was stretched out his mighty arm and scattered the proud with their plans. He has brought down mighty kings from their thrones and lifted up the lower. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away with empty hands. He has kept the promise he made to our ancestors and he, <clears throat> he has come to the help of his servant Israel. He has remembered to show mercy to Abraham and to all his descendants forever. Mary stayed about three months with Elizabeth, and then she went back home. What did God see in Mary that he chose her to be the mother of Christ? And Mary, how did she find the courage to accept? God's choice was to live among us, as one of us. This is his love in all its glorious action. This year, on the fourth Sunday of Advent, the birth of the baby Jesus is imminent. 
We read of Mary who practiced love courageously, accepting God's purpose for her life. And her words and actions throughout time, giving heart to all of us who receive God's call to love deeply and effectively in ways that are life-giving, life-changing, oh, in large and small ways. Mary not only embodied these ways, but she also partnered with God to give life to the flesh and blood and spirit of Jesus. Emmanuel, God with us. Think of God's faith in all those people in the Bible. Then think about our own personal faith in God. Remember what the angel Gabriel said to Mary. Nothing, absolutely nothing, is impossible with God. May God strengthen us through this good news to say yes to the one who makes love known and whose birth we celebrate here at our heritage on Christmas Eve. Take our, our prayer 
prayers and our thanksgiving and concern to God. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we come to you in prayer with concerns in our hearts and our, on our minds. We bring them before you, God, not because you will do exactly what we think you should, but because, because you are a mighty God, and we trust in the answers that you give us. Generous and loving God, we give you thanks and praise for the wisdom of your word and the hope of your promises. God, we pray for all who are ill in body, mind, or spirit. May your strength always be found in homes and hospital rooms, in prisons, and wherever there is need for comfort and companionship in this valley of pain. We lift before you silently and aloud the names of those who, whose names are known to us, praying for Pat, Erna, Lynn, Elliot, Marilyn, Maureen, Marilyn, and the family of Bob Little. Brooke, Craig, and Carol. For Lauren, Fred, Susie, Nancy, Robin, Alice, and Bailey. Jacob, Lana, And we call on your aid for those whose names are unknown to us. Our faith in you draws us to the heart of life with love to rejoice in birth, with tenderness to pray for the body, with kindness to offer support and care for those in need. And as life changes, deal with us where we are and in our purpose. We thank you, Lord, for your blessings. That little baby Jesus, whose birth is in miracles born so long ago, and who grew to be a man who taught his disciples to pray, a prayer that has endured all the centuries later. We pray that prayer now. Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.